Hello and welcome, dear viewer, to another Serenity OS hacking video. Today I thought I would do something a little bit different. I am not actually going to do much work today, like actual proper work. <clears throat> I'm just going to do some Git stuff and, and fixing up uh, things and getting a pull request ready. So what you're looking at right now is the audio yakkering branch, um, which is, has a fun name. And this is the pull request. Um, and it says up here what the purpose of this pull request is. Replace the many audio buffers or the many audio buffer by a single small scale circular buffer. So Unfortunately, I don't have time to go into much detail as to how all of this exactly works and um, why this change is good. And I'll probably in the near future, I've planned to do like an audio subsystem overview now that uh, or after we've done this change, after this changes in the system. Um, <clears throat> and but like to give you a summary um currently we're sending a bunch of anonymous files to the audio server whenever we want to play some audio and these anonymous files are in memory sh shared memory buffers that contain audio data um so we extract uh, the audio data out of them and um we mix it together in uh in the mixer somewhere somewhere in here Basically, yeah, basically we we get a next sample and stuff. This this code basically stays the same. We just receive audio data from the client. However, the big issue with the old approach is that we have uh, this these buffers that are sent, and every time we want to send a buffer, we have to do an IPC call. Um, now let's see if I can open the audio client IPC endpoint, that's the wrong one, audio server IPC endpoint. Um, yeah, so probably, yeah, it, I already removed all of the uh, old functions. So let's see if we can just, um, if we can find the, maybe I can just uh, reveal Open changes, open file at revision. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a very old version, but um, let's just assume that that's basically it. I, I mean, that's that's basically it. Uh, this is this is a very old version of the uh, IPC interface, but um, this is also how it looked until recently. So we enqueue a buffer. Um, uh, this is the buffer ID, which is. Later on, we send actual file names, but yeah, that's basically still how it worked up until my changes here. And which means that every time we want to send a buffer, we have to uh, we have to call IPC and send that buffer and create a new shared file, which is um, and, and then receive that shared file and map it into memory on the server side and then read data out of it. And that is fine if we have a couple of large buffers, for example, a play the best audio playing utility um, was sending like really large chunks, like several hundred kilobytes um, chunks of audio data, which is fine because several hundred kilobytes of audio data um, play for about a second. So we just had to send audio data every second approximately. However, if we want to have more real time audio, uh, we have to we have to send much much shorter chunks of audio, and um, that would involve a couple thousand IPC calls per second. And even though that goes through some sh like really short, quick sh shared memory in the kernel, uh, all of this like local socket IPC sending, uh, you can you can look up Andreas's video on details on how IPC works. But yeah, still even though that goes through uh, the kernel in a reasonably fast way, it won't be fast enough for real-time audio and it will incur a lot of latency that we can avoid. So that's the reason why this interface is going out and I'm putting in a new interface. 
now I've actually explained like all the reasoning behind this thing to you. Um, so <laughs> anyways, um, what, what we do now is we just use a single buffer. Um, now the audio new buffer, I, can, I can't open this from here. Let's just see the buffer, the LH file. We will have to do a bunch of changes today to this file, but the, the new buffer is just a uh, shared circular queue which is a new um, data structure that I've written. It's basically a log-free queue that works under the assumption that there's only one producer that writes data into it and multiple consumers that uh, uh, take data out of it. Um, and yeah, that's just... Um, uh, that's just a log-free queue. Um, uh, I won't go over the details on how everything here works. There's uh, like a paper that I basically adapted. Um, it uses atomics um, to avoid locking, except when you actually want to have locking, it uses scheduler yield, yield and basically uh, spin locks in a way, except it spin locks efficiently by not, uh, not actually spinning, but just yielding the thread. Um, anyways, there, there's a bunch of implementation details here and uh, it, it works. Like what, what we do now is in the audio server, we just send that initial buffer and that initial buffer is, or, or that, that buffer is just mapped into the memory, both on the client and on the server side. And the client writes audio into the queue and the um, server reads audio out of the queue. And this queue is used f forever. It's it's circular, so um, uh, you, you you write audio into it, you, you read audio out of it, and there is always a certain amount of fullness to the queue. Um, but the uh, big advantage is that every time you want to write audio, you don't have to go through IPC. You just write into, into shared memory, which is basically the same speed as just writing into normal memory. There's, of course, the entire atomic overhead, but... Um, at atomics basically just destroy cache efficiency, um, except when they don't. Like like atomics might live in cache, and this is this is a bunch of uh, details of like synchronization um, and and log free programming. And honestly, I'm not qualified to talk about it. So, like TLDR, this should and probably is much faster than sending big buffers, especially when the amount of data we want to send at a time or like the latency of data that we want to send um, becomes really small. Um, and that's why I'm doing it. And uh, this is the PR and I've, I'm now basically completely done with a PR. There's only cleanup work remaining. And I want to today, I want to take you after this long introduction, I want to take you into all of the cleanup work. So if you if you see um, all of these commits, um, these are all the um, the the commits that uh, we need to we need to fix up. Um, there's there's a bunch of them that uh, that I probably won't have to touch. Like uh, for example. Oh no, I'll, I'll definitely have to cut, uh, touch this one. But for example, this resampling, re uh, resampling rework where uh, you can now resample from any array-like type because I want to resample from fixed arrays instead of vectors. Um, that's, for example, something that just came up along the way. And maybe I'll also split it up into separate PR, but for, for today, I'll just put it into the same PR. Um, and yeah, and a bunch of these commits just need to be amended like for example the shared circular queue initial commit that just needs to be amended with all of my fixes and api changes and improvements that i've made while fixing bugs and so that like the first commit that introduces this queue just has the final finished version of it because that also doesn't depend on anything else like you can just add it and then later on uh, add all the users so that's what I will to do today. Um, there will be a big a big commit that basically changes uh, changes the entire audio system over to the new buffer, um, which will it will be a big yak tangle commit. Um, I hope I remembered to put yak tangle on the screen right now, um, and and that will basically be unavoidable. Um, yeah, so. 
what I have to do now, let's let's actually start by just putting like like fi fixing up all the code, which basically mainly means also removing debug lines, um, which I've done uh, for testing purposes, and uh, that's usually how we how we work. Um, I will I will have to do that. Then I'll have to rename new buffer to buffer and remove the old buffer. Um, also, I'll have to look up all the references. Uh, let's actually look that up. Uh, that's just in buffer, 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 um, sample widget, just, what do they do? Resampler. Um, still has resample buffer. I think I can just remove that uh, resampler, resample buffer. Then here we have from PCM data. Okay, that that is actually a bigger issue. Um, wave loader still depends on buffer to uh, to create its PCM data correctly. Um, that is not something I can easily change I, I of course it's possible like these from pcm data apis are basically just um yeah just honoring the pcm sample format and a reading different sample formats and there's a bunch of code here but all of this is not technically specific to buffer however honestly i don't want to fix it now okay so th so that is actually actually an issue um, I think what I'll do for for today is of uh, or for this PR as well. I will just rename rename buffer to legacy buffer, and just have. Then I'll actually have to keep this to sample array thing. Uh, basically, I don't want to touch wave loader that deeply, especially not in this PR. Um, I, I basically just did the minimal adjustment that all the loaders need to not return buffers but instead return fixed arrays of samples um, and yeah so i think i'll just rename that to legacy buffer and rename new buffer which i've like used for the time being to buffer okay um and also i will i will remove all of these like um pre-declares that are not necessary anymore like there's there's a bunch of these like um bunch of these forward declares not pre-declares what a weird why did i say pre-declares anyways uh, all of these forward um declarations can can go for the most part like yeah in this case uh th this was this was buffer beforehand um so that's why we needed the uh, forward declaration um, but I can just remove that. Like we're not even including uh, buffer or audio forward or anything anymore. Okay. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Let's see. Where do I want to start? Oh yeah, that's that's what I did just before the stream. I removed these proofs. Like uh, the circular queue has a bunch of proofs uh, to it, but these proofs are not correct anymore because I changed how the compare and swap is used a little bit because i think it was wrong beforehand or it wasn't entirely correct like we there were some race conditions that were possible um i, I don't want to bore you with the details of, of how that entire thing works um so let's yeah let's let's just do all of all of this at once um or yeah, I'm. I'm not entirely sure. I sh I should actually do the rename of buffer to legacy buffer as one of the first commits, and then add uh, the the new buffer, which will just be called buffer. Um. So, yeah, I think I'll I'll do all of the debug line removes first of all. So those can all go. They're already commented out. I think that's all of it. No, I'm not super sure 
Like there, there's these that still exist. Um, I'm not super sure which ones I want to remove um, because they're, they're kind of useful to know that uh, the, the queue exists and stuff. Like I, I, I'll definitely keep a couple of debug lines. I think I'll remove this obtained and non-create. Um, and I'll definitely uh, keep the audio client can't keep up um, thing, which is here. Basically, if the queue is empty, uh, that means that the client didn't put in audio data fast enough. And yeah, we definitely want to see that if the audio client can't keep up, that's an important warning we want to uh, print out to the console. So I think I'll, I'll keep that, but there shouldn't be anything anymore in Mixer. Uh, th this one is, is old. Um, and also that's uh, printing errors, so that's fine. Um, yeah, this is all known stuff. Let's see. I think ASKittle is fine. Yeah, ASKittle also has a bunch of rewriting actually, and it's it it has a bunch of improvements. Um, wait, no, sorry. A play has a bunch of rewriting and improvements. You can see all of these gray lines is all the lines that I touched in the uh, pull request. So yeah, um, what what A play actually does now is uh, while it waits for the uh, for the server to like uh, like decrease the, uh, the the buffer uh, so play play the buffer um, it w uh, prints a playback update every uh, tenth of a second so at 10 fps which means that you get a smooth count up like um, a smooth second pl uh, seconds played count up in the playback progress of a play which is super 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 nice um, I, th I, I should technically <laughs> extract that into its own uh, into its own commit. However, I don't know if I'll be able to uh, to like untangle that. Um, let's let's uh, let's continue anyways. Let's not get sidetracked with a bunch of other shit because there's there's nothing right now to fix about about this. I don't need that. Just I'm just looking through uh, these. All right, do we have something here? No, we only have this reached end of provided audio data. That's uh, also fine to keep. And also, of course, the error. Um, so this is actually like the utility, so to speak. Like all of this, all of this new audio and queuing is rather complicated and precise to time. So what I've done is I've written uh, this like audio writing loop with uh, a bunch of extra logic with like a backing buffer that is that we extract these small sample chunks out of is just so that applications that don't care about real time can just uh, and queue audio like they already do like give give the client connection a big big chunk of audio and just let it play in the background don't don't worry about all the real time stuff and the real time stuff is still possible with real time nq which currently has no users um but that will be uh, that will be for piano um, for and for other real time um, audio applications. Yeah, so I think a client connection is fine. I just fixed shared circular queue. Wave loader has nothing anymore. A skittle shouldn't have anything. Let's actually look. <laughs> you can you can see th this touches a lot of files. This is all the files that are touched by this. Um, right, sound player. We have to we have to look into sound player. Um, that's actually, I'm noticing right now, I need to change these includes. Um, let's see in the header. It should be fine. A bus visualization widget actually has a weird bug now after, after my pull request where, um, like w when sound player opens, a uh, bars visualization widget is completely blank, but if you just switch to another visualization and switch back to it, it it, it works again. So I think that's something I'll create an issue for. In fact, I could create the issue right now, um, or or I'll create it later. I don't know. Anyways, um, but that's not something I think I caused because it still works and it even plays it even plays pretty fast. Like the 
update rate of uh, the browser visualization widget is, is really fast and really nice. So I don't think I caused that. Like, It's a git blame someone else situation. Um, I, w I found a, a bunch of other bugs, but I don't think I caused any of them. Here we go, bus visualization widget. Let's see in the playback manager, um, the CPP file. Um, yeah, of course the, like the playback manager does all the enqueuing. So I had to change a bunch of stuff here. Um, and actually I think audio sound player is more resilient to, um, to, to like playback stutters than it has ever been before. So we, we already got some real observable improvements from this change. Um, I'm basically selling the PR to you at this point, which won't be necessary, I hope, because I hope that by the time this video goes up, um, uh, we'll already have this merged. But yeah, I think I have nothing to fix here. Let's see, sample widget. Um, advanced view, nothing here. What did I even change? Yeah, th there's just like some basic changing, like uh, exchanging the buffer for a fixed array, which is long overdue. Because as I'm, as I was saying, like the old buffer is rather expensive. It's always shared memory and stuff, and like always just for playing, like just for loading audio and just for uh, doing some things with load, loaded audio, you always need to have shared memory. That's just absurd. And that's why this change should be beneficial to, to, to everyone. Um, even if you don't actually want to send audio or deal with real-time audio and that sort of stuff. So what did I, what did I actually change here? Uh, or what did I change about the headers? Uh, oh, it's just fixed array. Cool. Um, visualization widget. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I've already checked most of those. Uh, let's just check flag loader again. Um, yeah, that's just this fixed array stuff. Um, also that, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like the loaders don't send shared memory buffers or they don't create shared memory buffers anymore. Every time they load some audio data, they just load that into a fixed array of samples, which is obviously the better way to do it if you, especially if you don't want to send audio. I think that should make a bench, the, the audio benchmarking utility a lot faster because that thing actually doesn't connect to audio server at all. It just loads audio data as long as it can and just times how long that takes. Um, and it's just for me to see how fast my crappy <laughs> flag loader uh, goes. Oh, and also, yeah, I'm, I'm finally changing the name of this variable. It's not the number of maximum bytes, it's the number of maximum samples to read from input. Um, which is, yeah, the nicest change. Uh, and here we go, yeah. So loader samples is not a, that should be an error or, but yeah. Uh, it's it's not a non non pair of buffer, but it's a fixed array of sample. Okay, resample CPP. I actually created that file, interesting. Um, yeah, it, it can, it can have these quote includes because, oh, right. I, I extracted like the resampling code into its own file because the buffer file itself should like basically be, uh, be pretty much empty ex except for some defines, uh, or like, yeah, because the main current buffer thing should eventually go uh, away. So that's why I. Uh, why I extracted all of these uh, these things into their own files. That's the first commit, I think, uh, or the second commit. Split buffer HCPP into three files. Yeah, that's buffer, resampler, and sample formats. Uh, let's let's continue. Where was I? Down here. Sample formats. That should be fine. Flag loader. Okay, uh, wave loader. Uh, we can quickly fix that up. It should be this way and shared circular queue. Yeah, I already looked at that. Lib IPC, let's see. Um, 
I shouldn't need to do anything here. Yeah, that's all fine. Of course, like the reason that I'm touching the IPC here is that uh, this new a queue still not st needs to be sent over IPC once, so I'll still need to implement the decoding and encoding. Uh, however, that's not really hard. And of course, the big changes with uh, the client user interface. We have to change that uh, when we rename new buffer. Um, but I'll have to do that after doing some initial uh, commit ordering. So let's first go and do that correct event loop import um that's fine this is not fine um client connection dot h wait client connection cpp needs libcore event loop why does it need event yeah it probably needs event loop but if we just put if the header already needs that we don't have to put it into the uh, thing anymore. Of course, we'll need buffer um, because I, I won't rename that file. That will just be a lot of effort for nothing. Not audio stream. Do we actually need buffer here? Wait. Oh yeah, right. We need new buffer here. Um. Um. Like we we had a lot of we had a lot of talk recently about uh, that we should use more forward declare headers and less like actually including the entire header, especially if it's heavyweight um, headers, as to reduce build times. Uh, but I'm but I'm not sure what exactly is the best course of action here, and especially I don't want to make this PR into a general uh, lib audio refactoring PR. It it kind of is already, but. Um, yeah, it would probably be beneficial to have a lib audio uh, f forward header. Let's see, where's that uh, lib audio? Do we have a forward? We don't have a forward declaring header in lib audio yet. Yeah, I mean, I can I can do that in another PR. Um, let's let's yakstack dot push that. I'm already talking in in, in emo emojis. That's how you know I'm a hardcore Serenity developer. Okay, mixer. Uh, wait, did I did I actually fix that up? Uh, yeah, I already fixed that up. Why do we need atomic? Mm. Why do we need atomic? Did I did I? Doesn't appear that we need atomic. Yeah, that's that's another thing. Reducing compile times by reducing the number of includes. Let's hope that doesn't blow up later. Um, mixer. Yeah, that's just a bunch of changes. Let's check the debug lines again. Should be fine. Uh, A bench. Yeah, a bench just uh, has has an easier time by not needing to interact with the buffer. Uh, like a bench is is really the simplest to adopt here. Uh, a play needs the resampler, uh, of course, because that has its own file now. And a, a bench has changed a bunch. So a, a play. I am confused. Yeah, and this. Like, uh, AS Kirtle has a bunch of weird errors. Like it, it, it just hangs when we, uh, when we change the, uh, change the sample rate. But I think actually what no, it doesn't hang right. It just waits for the audio server to close its connection, which the audio server never does because the audio server itself gets, uh, gets stuck while trying to, uh, tr or while changing the. Uh, while uh, changing the sample rate and then trying to write. So I think that's an issue with the AC97 driver. <laughs> Get to blame someone else because I didn't write that. Yelle wrote that. Um, I I've already informed him or I've already informed people that that might be an issue. Um, so yeah, this 
is apparently broken, but I'm also pretty sure I didn't break it. As far as my, my like debugging to tells me. Um, so let's just, yeah. Uh, that's, that's everything, uh, except, yeah, that's just the atomic command, disjoint chunks, right? I, I did a bunch of changes to that. We'll have to, do I have a separate commit for that already? Um, let's, let's check the commits. Um, IK export disjoint chunks into the global namespace. Um, make, here we go. Um, make disjoint chunk support fixed array. Yeah, that's the main change. It didn't support fixed array beforehand because it was using a bunch of vector specific APIs. Although like disjoint chunks is technically templated over the actual chunk type, which just beforehand always was a vector because Ali uh, wrote the thing for some regex performance improvements, if I remember correctly. Um, and yeah, this, I, th I think I should, like I, I should kind of like co-author him on this PR because we went or uh, on this uh, commit we because we went back and forth about this uh, a bunch of the, and the solution that I have here with like a free function in the detail namespace that uh, templates over the uh, type here uh, depending on whether we need fixed array or whether we need a vector. Uh, th that's that recommendation is by him. So <laughs> yeah. Um... I think there's no debug lines here, which is what I'm technically checking right now. And fixed array just has is empty because that's what vector has as well. Just a trivial API. I mean, it doesn't make much sense for fixed array because uh, vector is dynamic and fixed array is static in size. So um, is empty only makes sense if you get a fixed array and you don't know whether it, it has actually any size because you can just create a zero size fixed array and that just means uh that this kmalloc probably does nothing uh wait yeah because fixed array internally just has a size any an element pointer except fixed array is guaranteed to never reallocate the element pointer so once once that is allocated it will just stay the same pointer um which also means that data is rather convenient because it will always point at the same thing as long as the fixed arrays alive and in the destructor we just free that so there's just two allocations here there is um there is kmalloc in track create uh yeah the different variants and there is k3 in destructor um yeah that you can you can read about uh, you can read up about that uh, both in my comments here as well as in the patterns documentation, I think. Um, I wrote something about that because that's how I intend fixed array to be. It's basically guaranteed as long as you uh, have a fixed array that is valid, uh, no matter what you do with it, it will never allocate. And that's an important guarantee for real-time audio. Um, let's see, we have, uh, we need a threat pledge in the audio applet because yeah, as, as I was saying, like the client connection creates another thread. Might be able to see that somewhere. Uh, client connection in lib audio. Yeah, uh, we create another thread, which uh, just runs an event loop that um, enqueues these small audio chunks from like the big uh, chunks of audio that the, the actual user gives us. Um, so that's why we need the thread pledge in everything that uses audio. Okay, I think we are done here. Let's add all of these. Should be, should be everything. Okay, now the last commit is, I'll, I'll just append amend into the last commit and then I'll do some reordering, some rebase, uh, some, yeah, some rebasing. Um, and then I'll just remove a bunch of commits again, or like, um, like, uh, yeah, restore them into the staged area so that I can recommit. So we will do a bunch of rebasing today. So maybe you'll, you'll learn something, uh, a thing or two about git commit. Like that's one of the goals with this video. And the other goal is just to see for you if, 
you know, how I work with really, really large changes. Um, I've had to do things like that before a bunch of times. So, um, and dash dash, no, it's... Okay, so now let's let's look at the list of commits here. Uh, by the way, uh, if you want to have these nice commit views and uh, branch views and stuff, you uh, want to use the git lens extension. Git lens, find that. Yeah, here we go. Um, this is, it's actually by git kraken. Okay, interesting. Um, that's, uh, git kraken is uh, like a, also a, um, a GUI interface for Git, um, which is free of charge, I think. And yeah, Git, Git lens is basically just an extension that is technically independent of their GUI stuff. But yeah, it's just it's just a really really uh, great Git extension that um, allows you to do all of these s things very conveniently. Um, I, I'll still use the command line a bunch today uh, because, like all of the complicated rebase workflows, it's just you just have to use the command line uh, or like some more advanced thing than git lens. It just doesn't, doesn't bode well. Okay. Um, yeah. So let's rebase. Dash I had, oh God, how many commits is that? Let's just do 20 commits. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. 20 commits is enough. So what I want to do is order all the commits that are finished or almost finished to the back, put all these work in progress commits to the front, and then, uh, or basically I'll also squash them or uh, fix up them uh, because, um, because I want to split, split them up because they're not, uh, they're not really finished. Okay. Split buffer, three files, add implicit integer constructor, allow resampling from any array like type, add an array conversion transitional API to buffer. Um, okay, I will think I'll also do like these. Yeah, the, uh, I think I'll just also order them because they, those commits are all independent. Um, I'll just put the put the AK commits first. Um, I'll also group them. So first we get like just a comment commit. We get fixed array is empty, which we will need for like the, those those three depend or these four depend on each other kind of. Um, then we export disjoint spans. Uh, then we do this uh, um, support fixed array. This this commit. I'm kind of rambling. This commit depends on this commit um, because in order for it to support fixed array, like the container type needs to have is empty. That's why I'm adding it down here. Um, now this append uh, thing, yeah, that's just a fix up. That's also in support of the of uh, fixed array support because um, append was implicitly always copy constructing the container. Um, which is fine for vector because vector has a, a copy constructor, but fixed array doesn't because that implicitly allocates and basically copy construction happens kind of invisibly. And that's why it's, uh, that's why we have decided that it's not a good idea to have a copy constructor. A move constructor is fine because that's always implicit. And also you're not, uh, you're not the like, copying data. You're just moving the data ownership around. You're just moving the pointer from uh, one location to, uh, to the other, um, which doesn't, doesn't change anything about the fact that the memory is still allocated and still exists. Um, that's why we just have a move constructor on, uh, fixed array and not a, um, copy constructor. And this, uh, this append call actually receives a, an R value, I think. So a, a moved data, a moved object. Uh, a moved thing, whatever. Um, so it can just move that into its internal uh, API that it uses for moving. Um, and that's just fine. I, I think I should have shown you the code. Anyways, <laughs> uh, 
These, these all kind of depend on each other. So we just put them in the beginning here. Then we have a bunch of lib audio, like preparator, uh, pre preparatory changes. Is that a word? I don't know. Um, yeah, we need this. Then, yeah, the shared single producer circular queue needs to be amended with a, with all the fix ups. Uh, audio server auto pause new clients. Yeah, I think I'll I can keep that separately. Like the the more things I can extract, uh, the better. Um, I think this is actually already amended with all of the uh, encoder decoder fixes that I came up with later. Uh, but we'll see. We'll uh, we'll have to look at this massive uh, commit at the very end. Um, let's start the rebase. Let's hope that that works. Um, now we have a conflict in mixer. Let's see. Where are we? Um, let's let's see the merge changes. Okay, auto pause new clients. Yeah, maybe the reordering wasn't the best idea. Do you remember what was the? Uh, I I don't remember the exact order anymore. Yeah. Okay. Um, the incoming change of auto pause new clients. To technically just change m pause to true. Um, let's just so it sh the incoming change. This is the correct, correct code. Like all of these APIs, like all of this stuff is like from the old. Like we have had a queue of buffers, and the current buffer and the position in the in the current buffer and the main samples and the plate samples. Blah blah blah. Um, but that's that's all unnecessary, uh, especially because like the the queue, the the actual queue, which is the new buffer thing, um, you can actually extract the number of plate samples from that by just looking up up uh, the position of the head pointer and multiplying that by the number of samples per, per chunk. Anyways, I think we can just use the incoming change, um, and that will probably die because. Okay. Uh, ah, right, right, right. I moved this this commit this like auto pause new clients commit. I moved that before actually all of this new buffer and uh, ch uh, changes like the, the actual change that this PR is trying to do moving to the new buffer system uh, or the new queue system. Um, so I'll I'll have to reorder that later. But for now, <laughs> let's just quickly accept the uh, incoming change. Put that uh, into merge and git rebase continue. And that should be fine. Oh my. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, okay. <laughs> now let's see. Accept the incoming change here. Audio player loop, playback manager. Um, I think I can just accept the incoming change everywhere, I believe. Uh, but but I'll do it manually anyways, just, just for safety. Uh, this is that change. Okay. Client connection and queue. Try and queue and buffer. New blah, blah, blah. Background in queuer, custom event, buffer head times audio buffer size. Yeah, that's what I was talking about uh, just a moment ago. Uh, like the amount of remaining samples, remaining buffers. Yeah, uh, you can you can check how, how many things that, things there are. Let's just accept the incoming change, and let's accept the incoming change here. Uh, th this doesn't make sense, actually. What the hell? Buffer head times audio buffer size. I think I think I ordered uh, the commits wrong. Maybe I should just abort the rebase. Uh, save that. I think I'll just abort the rebase. 
Um, reload the changes here. Um, okay, yeah, I'll I'll have to I'll have to do, uh, try that again. Let's make absolutely sure that we keep the order of these. So. Yeah, maybe maybe let's not uh, let's not do anything else except like audio server auto pause new clients. I think I'll just have to wait, wait, wait. Um, let's do that again. I need to remember the order because audio server auto pause new clients is after this work in progress. Yeah. Okay. So let's just. Uh, like move that down very carefully. Like all of these AK changes should be independent. Um, yeah, and let's let's keep the order here. And I I think I'll have to redo the auto pause new client um, thing. And let's just fix up those. And let's not change anything else. Let's 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 go step by step here. I think I I try to do too much there. Okay. Yeah. That that worked. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, so now I can... Th this is now the massive... Yeah, this is the massive change. Okay. Great. Let's... So, okay, let's, let's rebase again. And now we have like a kind of... Let's do the rebase in steps. Let's, let's try that again. Um... Let's move down all the AK changes. So this should should be fine. I mean, I could just look at the on the left side. Um, inform Atomic users, this is the only commit that touches Atomic, so this should be fine. Export disjoint spans into the global namespace. Okay, let's let's try the order that we did before. Um, so these need to be in order. Okay, let's let's try this. And that worked. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Now I now I basically have all the structure that I want. Um, okay, now, now the only step is to split up this big, big chungus boy and um, amend various parts of it into previous commits and so on. Okay, Get reset, hat, carrots. And here we go. Now we have all of these changes. Okay. Okay, first step, let's amend, uh, let's amend decode, uh, actually, yeah, okay. Um, there's just a comment. Uh, I think that's actually good. Let's amend the decoder change into the, uh, into the allow transporting shared circular queue over IPC commit, okay. Git commit fix up for this commit. And now later, if you don't know about fix up, basically it just does this like fix up exclamation mark. And later I can rebase with auto squash and will reorder the fix up commits and like change their property to fix up correctly so that it that I don't have to worry about wh where they go anymore. Basically by just doing this fix up thing, uh, I've already ensured that later on I can automatically squash them and f uh, make them a fix up commit for the other commit. It's a really convenient um, Git feature. Like the moment I figured out that it existed, I, I was just, I was blown away. Fantastic. I mean, I mean, Git, Git is really good. You just have to know how to use it. Okay, here we go with uh, the, uh, with like all the fix ups for, need cdefs here all the fix up for sh shared circular queue that's what i was trying to say 
um, except except previously okay yeah um, what do I need from cdefs should maybe compile at some point check why we need do we need cdefs oh because of sketchy scheduled um let's get that age though what is what is cdefs doing anyways nothing basically like like nothing that i need what the hell okay that's weird i need sketch sketch dot a but sketch dot h difficult to say but nothing else i believe yeah let's let's actually try a compile here come on should build rather fast because ccache will detect that basically nothing has changed At least like yeah stuff like uh the, the browser should build rather fast maybe i'll insert some fun music here but, uh, yeah it looks it looks rather good i mean i've, I've not, not really changed anything substantial but uh now, now we're getting link time problems well, it would be great if everything just linked with mold. I know Daniel has been working a lot on getting mold to work, but I think there's still a lot of things that just won't work in the system. Like it, it kind of links, but like our <laughs> dynamic linker then just doesn't understand some of the mold stuff, I believe. Or yeah, he will probably correct me if he watches the video, but... In either case, that works. So we did, in fact, not need um, CDEVs. So that's cool. Um, ref per, we need ref counted, I believe. Yeah, let's just check that. We need ref per, we need uh, ref, ref counted. Um, we need uh, format. Do we need format? Or, yeah, we, we, do we have debug lines here? We have debug lines here, so we need AK format. Um, need non copyable. Um, probably some of these are non copyable. Um, no, in fact, not. In fact, not. Don't need non copyable anymore. And we need AK assertions for verify and verify not reached. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let's. I, I won't actually check that uh, head, or I, ca I can actually, I think. But that would be. Would be a rebuild of 400 something files. Uh, yeah, I'll just. I'll just do the, the commit while that builds. And also, I'm sincerely hoping that nothing is dropping out while this thing is building. Yeah, so, okay. Git commit, fix up. Let's see the introduce shared single producer circular queue. Commit. Great. Okay. Yeah, that might freak out now because of like intermediate commit stuff and um, I don't know how, how well that bodes. I think there was some fixes to, to that, like that we um, 
don't freak out the build when we commit while we build. I think it might might need to run again. Yeah, it uh, needs to. It's to actually run again, but yeah, I don't, I don't think there's an issue anywhere here. Yeah, okay. Okay. So now let's figure out what we can change around here. We need to we need to have a separate commit that renames buffer to legacy buffer. And the big issue is I, I can't really do that here. So I think what I'll have to do is um, now that I've extracted all the extractable stuff, which is basically just um, Basically, just the IPC and uh, shared single producer circular queue fixes. I think I'll have to sample helper. So sample, read sample. What is? Oh, did I need to? Mm. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, scratch that. I think we have something. Yeah. Right. Okay. I have to. I have to actually amend the like initial split out commit for um for the uh, for this this thing um allow resampling from any array right uh no I actually have to I think I have to let me let me see does that touch that that's the question uh resample helper resample Sample helper, that's just the uh, templated thing. Yeah, right. Be I remember why this is an issue because uh, I wanted to also use sample here and I kind of just specialized the template for i32 and double uh, in the actual CPP file. But now I wanted to add sample and it was all go uh, getting a bit much having the template in the CPP file. So I just moved it to the H file. But I think resample itself is untouched because let's let's check resample. It's added here, and here we have read sample out of line in a templated class, and we kind of revert that with this. I think yeah, read sample. Okay, okay. I think I can. Maybe maybe I'll get some. I'll get some um, merge conflicts, but I think I can, or I should be able to resolve them if I just emit, because because logically that belongs into this commit. Let's reuse the fix up thing, but fix up another one. Okay. Let's see if we missed anything else that we can just fix up. I mean, this is technically possible due to like the fixed array move in, in the loaders, but not really because then we would have to like have a commit, like a part of that commit, we would have like a conversion function everywhere just to that conversion function to get deleted in the next commit. Like I could split this commit up, but I would need to have a bunch of intermediate, um, inter intermediary, like, like fixes and hacks that are completely unnecessary because in the end they're all gone anyways. So it's just blowing up the number of changes you have to make and the number of things you have to check just in order to get the commit split up uh, more. And it's, I don't think it's worth the effort. Like I think at, at some point, I think that's, uh, I hope at some point uh, we'll just have to accept that this is a big change and requires a big commit. Okay, but yeah, the, the like buffer rename, I should do that separately. So I think what I'll do is just, just check in if there's anything that I'll have to adjust here. No, those are just the, like the main minor adjustments. I think I'll just have to 
or let's let's see. Yeah, there's there's nothing else here. that's everything yeah looks good okay move to new uh, queue system system everywhere okay and this this will be another temporary commit that's why i prefix this, uh, it with work in progress so what I need to do now is actually go back. Okay, let's let's first actually squash those fix up commits. I think that will be much easier. If if we have like uh, merge conflicts here, we can we can fix them now, and don't have to worry about it later. Had twenty again. I don't know. Yeah, and you, you see those are automatically reordered. Re okay, yeah, okay, I expected that. Um, let's see, but I think the incoming change is the split buffer into three files. Um, let's accept the incoming change. And let's see what we have here yeah okay and remove all of that except the incoming change um let's see yeah we have we have the uh constructor in line here uh let's let's see actually if that compiles i mean i, I don't think i have to compile everything but, but it's hard to tell when it's like finished uh, compiling and linking lib audio. So I'll just, I'll just wait. But I think that looks good if it's, yeah, if it's already building is it already building applications no not yet what is what does the windows server have to do <laughs> with the resampler <laughs> what the hell okay uh anyways i think that compiled yeah okay that compiled cool um let's Add those merge changes and git rebase continue. Okay. Now we get another merge conflict that was to be expected. Yeah. Okay. So now it now it wants to actually remove that again and just undo all the stuff. So process sample. Okay, now, now we actually have to properly merge that, I believe. Where is read samples down here? And where's resample? Resample. This is a, allow resampling from any array like type. So this is the actual change that is introduced here. I think we just need the current change process sample read sample. If, if you look at it like this. Yeah, I think we just need the current change. Um, and we can just throw away that because, yeah, that is that is the old stuff. That should not be necessary anymore uh, because we have the constructor here. We have process for sample, read sample. Okay, but in either case, let's let's check. It actually involves a, lo a lot less rebuilding, apparently. Um, yeah, okay. Cool. Uh, add those changes. Yeah, actually, uh, I think all we change here is concepts. 
it concepts oh right because of array like um we need we need concepts for that that's actually good that i added that later um let's continue the rebase fantastic like this is actually this is already done right Ah, uh, yeah that looks good Um uh, resampler appears to be wait um sampler at h um resampler appears to be good um and this only has resample buffer now yeah it's a small cpp file but i think everything that we can move out of uh, out of header files is, is a good thing um because this is a header that a lot of audio code needs uh let's see just closing off some files that i don't currently need let's close the ipc files okay yeah okay so yeah right um so let's let's like um reset hard to that right, so the thing is i need to throw this commit away temporarily and then cherry pick it back um and so just that i make super absolutely sure that the commit is saved like i, I know it's um git saves commits or, or uh, like git doesn't just throw away commits if you remove them it, it they're still kept um in the git directory refs somewhere um, and you ha actually have to call git prune or git gc or something like that to actually remove them, um, which of course reduces the size of your uh, uh, of your folders. But uh, I, I actually I think I've never done that. So yeah, so I, even if I remove the commit here, it shouldn't um, it shouldn't just be gone. But to make it absolutely sure, I've now pushed it to the remote, so it definitely exists there. As long as I don't get push force again, it will definitely exist on the remote. Um, and if necessary, I can create a patch out of that and apply the patch, but it shouldn't be necessary. If we just, um, if we just put down a note, maybe. Uh, let's just abuse sync local because I don't want to create a new file. Let's just put down a note with the uh, commit hash of that commit. I think we should be fine. Um, okay, so now let's hope that I remember the git command for that correctly. It should be git re reset hard to the previous commit. And that, yeah, okay, that, that didn't put everything back into the uh, into the working tree that's what normal git reset does yeah okay so now we're just missing one commit cool let's change the name of buffer let's close all of that and just try to do a rename buffer h because now we should just yeah we, we just have buffer here okay it's a legacy buffer now Ooh, th did that just? Oh my god! I think Clang format was help. Uh, Clang D was helpful once. <laughs> uh, why is that not working? Because uh, it doesn't. Yeah, probably because like the. That's the thing. Um, like the pre-generated files are incorrect now, um, because I never built uh the thirty-two. Bit build, but like the compilation database and all the includes are from the 32 bit build for Clang D. If you look into uh, Clang, wait, dot Clang D, here we go. Yeah, uh, the includes are from somewhere back here, um, are from i686. Uh, and, and also, yeah, the. Yeah, it's, it's just the thing um, with, with like IPC auto generated headers and stuff. It just uh, doesn't like it. Yeah, those things don't don't exist anymore because the current state of the pre-generated file in the 32-bit build is 
um, is like after all the all the changes uh, with the new system where all of these responses and all of these uh, calls don't exist anymore. But that shall not keep us from proceeding. I believe that we should be able to compile now. Let's let's hope that that should actually be a larger compile, but maybe it still has things cached. Okay, no. Um, what was, yeah, okay, some things weren't caught. Legacy buffer, let's see, that's just the same line actually. Um, okay, we have, we have a bunch actually. Okay, so now we'll just have to look at things that weren't caught. Um, this was the old compile, I believe. Let's see. What's that? Yeah, that's the old compile. Uh, let's see. Legacy buffer. Legacy buffer, no declaration matches legacy buffer, uh, especially because now, wait, now I have to actually change the IPC files. Do I? Um, no, because that's not actually sending the, that's actually sending the underlying anonymous buffer. Okay, yeah, so I think some of these are just like follow-on uh, errors that are not not actually an issue. Or they're even from, yeah, they, I think they are from the previous compile, so I just misread that. Um, no declaration matches that thing. Because here, here the rename worked, and in in the header the rename didn't work. Uh, that's interesting. Um, yeah, no declaration matches. I believe I fixed all of that. Let's see, flag loader. Need to legacy buffer here. Legacy buffer. Um, cloud audio stream and probably the header as well or did the header actually work this time yeah okay sometimes the header doesn't work I mean it's just weird maybe it's also because like part of the files were not compiling because of missing IPC stuff let's try here legacy buffer Last. looks good yeah it actually compiles really fast because okay no uh we still have a bunch of missing places uh let's see yeah you can see a bunch of duplicate errors that's very normal so that's why i'm trying to scroll up to the top and find the first one okay Legacy visualization sample widget legacy and down here as well. Uh, legacy buffer base operand is not a pointer. Now these are like the follow on errors. Yeah, I mean, our lives would, would sometimes be a bit easier if the compilers didn't try to like continue compiling after encountering an error and just spitting out random non-errors. But I guess there are some advantages. I don't know. It's definitely an advantage for like language server stuff, for like what ClangD does. What's this? Oh, okay. Yeah, that actually doesn't make sense. <laughs> Const qualifying an int. <laughs> In a parameter, at least. Um, I mean, it would make sense down here, but 
N nothing down here is supposed to be const qualified. Uh, let's see. Something, this might be a follow on error because yeah, I changed that now. And this is probably all the errors, at least for now. No, it isn't. Let's see the bars visualization widget is next. Maybe I should just actually, let, let me just. Oh, there's a bunch of these still. Even in comments. Uh, that's the wrong field. Let's replace the whole world and case sensitive. Yeah, those are off. Replace all. Replace. Okay. Cool. Now it compiles. Um, let's commit this. That's actually pretty massive. Um, And then we'll have a bunch of uh, rebase conflicts. I am 100% sure. Okay. Name audio buffer, audio link. Uh, the buffer is uh, is uh, is to the following change in how we send audio buffer. The old buffer type is not really needed anymore. However, uh, moving wave loader to the new system is a bit more involved and out of the scope of this PR. Therefore, we, uh, we need to keep a buffer ar around, but to make it clear that's, that it's the old um, old buffer type, which will be removed soon. Uh, we rename it to legacy buffer. Uh, most of the users will be gone after, uh, after the next commit anyways. Okay, great. Let's let's re let's cherry pick our friend the sync local. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> That's a lot of merge conflicts. Um, either way. Yeah, because basically we can just, all occurrences of that, we can just replace by the incoming change, I believe. Um, Yeah, I was, I was just confused. Like this, this name is now pretty confusing because it's not really creating a buffer anymore. It's creating a fixed array, but I'm not going to rename it <laughs> because let's not get sidetracked. I was just uh, listening back to Andreas's office hours um, yesterday, um, which is the office hours of the 19th of February. February. Um, and and he was he was saying that yeah there's always these things along the road 
that you could change, but um, you want to get uh, you want to stay focused, and you can do those things later. Um, maybe I should actually make a note to myself, but I mean that's quite obvious. So just go through and like. Just fine. Let's. Yeah, I, I mean, the, most of those are already open. I mean, I, I could just accept. Uh, there's like an option here for like um, accept all incoming, but I don't want to do that. It's a bit a bit too risky to me. Okay, fix the rain. Fix the rain. Visualization widget, um, the header as well, playback manager. Yeah, that that's the thing also with like the pause, with the default pause. Okay, yeah, did add that. Uh, there is no onload sample buffer anymore and there is no or there's the getter change type as well playback manager okay we, we did add player sample widget looks like just another case of set buffer yeah i mean th this is just this is just really nice as uh, that uh, all of this like visualization stuff and widgets in 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 sound player just don't have to deal with uh with with audio buffers at all they just get fixed arrays which are much nicer fixed array should be good yeah that's also i i wrote that in the previous commit message of course like basically we're we're removing all the users right now um let's see like the only the only users remaining will be um will be the uh what is it the wave loader right so, okay uh that is <laughs> this is a weird merge a really weird merge uh, I mean, I know that this code is correct for die, um, or at least it's it's kind of correct. Uh, real time NQ. Um, this is correct for real time NQ. Try NQ. Uh, this is total plate. So yeah, it's just. It's a bit confused about what to actually merge where and what. Yeah, it's it was just a bit confused, but this this code uh, looks correct now. Async nq with locked specking samples append post event async start playback. Yeah, that that looks very correct to me. Um, let's add that. The h is probably just gonna be yeah yeah okay to avoid die does that have an override just check along the way flag loader should just yeah that, this, is, this is really great like previously we had to create a buffer from the samples and now we can just simply return them this should actually make flag loader uh, a lot faster except incoming change yeah this is also much cheaper and like anonymous buffers of size zero is not possible like that crashes the kernel or that, that the kernel just doesn't like that um and this is now much easier because we can just literally create an empty fixed array that's just something that fixed array supports so that's really nice i think there's nothing else here i mean it, it would tell me if i just press plus on on a file that hasn't uh, been merge conflict resolved it will complain so that's that's also really nice that's why i like using it uh this way like adding adding the merge changes back here
wave loader does the same thing except yeah this is this is the only user of legacy buffer that will remain or that sh that should remain um get played samples get remaining samples this should all just be gone because all of those apis don't exist anymore let's see the mixer doesn't have an nq or doesn't have this nq anymore and this should have yeah the m post true by default um that's something i'll have to split out actually um okay yeah so i missed something here okay right so i, d I don't have is fall and all that sort of stuff anymore before we go any further let's let's build that is that super build no that's actually the main build i think that was quick uh i am very suspicious but i guess that's just how that goes okay so about the mute change let us change that back uh, just let let's let's do this and let me just put down a node in sync local <laughs> sync local uh, has here by now become my node file um uh auto oops i made it audio server okay yeah that <laughs> i mean if if i were to start up the system then like it would just complain about this probably or it, it already does maybe i don't know Let's try that. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's probably not. Yeah, it's not installing. I think it's it's not actually building the disk image, so it doesn't it doesn't run the sync local. <laughs> yeah. By the way, if you want to know why why my system looks the way it looks, you have a chance to look at the sync local right now. Okay, I think we're ready to make the big commit, uh, the chunky boy commit. Uh, let's just, for, for safety, just search for uh, legacy buffer, not search for the replacement. Um, yeah, okay. All right, that, that's what I also wanted to do. Good that I searched for it. Because this is buffer, CPP, buffer H, we don't care. Um, this is, can be gone. Resampler still has the resample code. We're going to leave that for now. Not entirely sure whether we need that. Let's, let's just keep it for now and we can remove it later when we actually remove the legacy buffer completely. Okay, wave loader, we need that. Um, so do we have... Wait, we only have legacy buffer. Okay, so we don't need the forward declare. Reduces. Uh, what, what, what is that comment anyways? Like is it, yeah the floor is made up out of floor right yeah it's it i mean it's so obvious like what the hell uh let uh, let's just delete that comment um okay M maybe i should actually actually no uh no no wait wait, wait scratch that um i think i'll just oh Oh god, no. Um, is that wave loaded at H? Um, OK. 
Okay, I can just minus that for now. Um, yeah, uh, revert that, please. Um, yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll actually leave that for now. Um, and, and I'll put in another commit that just removes it. Um, okay, the, this should be able to go. Okay, great. We have only wave loader, resampler, and buffer um, that use legacy buffer. Let's rebuild just for safety because I'm I'm very worried with all of these changes that we fuck something up. Uh, but this should also, yeah, just, just clean up the code nicely. Okay, let's add all of this. So now we know that we don't have anything that dies here anymore. Okay. Except, yeah, now, okay, okay, now another big, big thing, actually. Renaming that, I, I renamed that, I named that a uh, new buffer in the beginning because buffer still existed in its old name. But now I want to name it something better. Um, buffer would be the obvious choice. Maybe I actually just want to call it audio queue. Let's, let's just call it audio queue. I think I'll actually do it like a text rename because nothing else should be named new buffer. Yeah, okay. And also that will rename it in audio server IPC. Um, okay, that doesn't change anything. I think I'll just do the rename. Okay, I'm, I'm kind of paranoid right now. Uh, <laughs> actually, let's let's also run the tests um, while we do uh, all all our other stuff. Let's run the tests. Oh, and now sync local will freak out probably. Will it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sync local. Uh, okay, uh, I'm not sure why this die happened, but let's let's actually open uh, sync local and just comment that out. Yeah. Okay. That that was the issue. Let's keep that running in the background. Ninety four. That's a lot. Oh yeah, that that decreases as so we add our. I mean, it's the the audio system is not tested, but I want to make sure that it didn't break anything else. Uh, okay. This is a big commit. I think I said that already a couple of times. Okay. Plus every. Or should I just uh, the body plus use that probably? Conflicts, wait, conflicts? Oh. Oh, oh God, no. Um, I need to finish the cherry pick first. Um, wait, I think I can abort. Yeah, I can abort a commit that way. Let's see. Okay, get cherry pick. Continue. Oh, here we go. Uh, it looks like you may be committing a cherry pick. If this is not correct, 
the commit mess. Okay, no, this is this is weird. But 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 down here it tells me like th this is what I expected. Um, and we also see the IPCs here. That's what I was confused about previously. Okay, lib audio plus user land. Audio queue. Uh, in client server communication. One character too many. Let's make that a use. Okay. Oh shit, what did we fail? <laughs> Test curves. I'm pretty sure I didn't cause that, especially because it's a dynamic object crash. Okay, yeah, right, we have, um, what is it called? Um, elliptic curve cryptography now, um, and there's, yeah, there's test, tests for that. Uh, okay. Okay, I, I'll just... Now this needs to be like the best commis commit message of all times. Like there, there is no, there is no way around it. This needs to be an amazing commit message. Okay. Especially because I'll probably just copy the commit message for the PR message, which currently is just a to do more rationale. <laughs> and this is the rationale. Okay. So previously we were sending um, buffers to the server whenever we had new audio data for it. Uh, no, I, I think I'll do the line breaks later. Um, this was fine. This meant that for every um audio and queue action we needed to create a new shared array anonymous buffer um uh send that buffer is file this crypto over uh, over IPC plus rec FD on the other side, um, and then map the buffer into the audio server's memory and be able to play it. Um, this was fine for sending large chunks of audio data, like when playing existing audio files. However, in the future, we want to move to a uh, real-time audio in some applications like piano. That's like the end goal of all of this. It's just like making piano a door is like the biggest yak check, yak, yak stack and yak chain of all times. Um, also, let me just put that yak ring emoji at the very end because this is a circular queue and yak ring is an emoji specifically created for circular queues. So yeah, if you want to move to real-time audio in some applications like piano, this means that the size of buffers that are sent need to be very small as, as just the size of a buffer itself is part of the uh, audio latency. 
uh, yeah, meaning that the amount of samples you have in each in each buffer is just itself a latency because uh, you can only like if if you press a press a note for example on your keyboard, um, you have to wait uh, in the worst case like until one entire buffer is played, until like the next buffer that actually has your uh, your key press um, in it um, to to hear that, uh, which is yeah what I'm what I'm getting at here. Oh, um, if we were to try real time audio with the existing system, we would run into uh, run into problems really quickly. Um, mapping shit. Uh, Dealing with anonymous files uh, with uh, with a continued stream of new anonymous files, like the current audio system is rather expensive, as we need kernel help in multiple places um, additionally every NQ incurs an IPC call which are not super fast uh, which are not uh, not optimized to run uh, for uh, over the second, which would be needed for audio with buffer sizes of around forty seconds. Like that's that's the regime we're talking about, and that's what like the current. Uh, let's let's look at buffer again. Um, yeah, the current size of an audio buffer is 50 samples, and we have 128 uh, buffers right now. Um, these numbers were smaller. I had 32 buffers and a buffer size of 40, uh, but I had some glitching. I think the glitching is gone now, but like adjusting this in the future is not not uh, not difficult. You you just have to change those numbers, and everything adjusts. And like the code is of course generically written, it can deal with any buffer count that is a power of two and any buffer size, in fact. So yeah, that's not a problem. Okay, uh, let's continue. Um, so a fundamental change in how we handle audio is necessary. Uh, how we handle audio sending in, in user space is necessary. Let's commit moves the audio sending sy system onto a shared single producer circular key. Uh, used with, with one of the previous commits. This queue is intended is capable of dealing of uh, is intended to live in shared memory and be accessed by multiple processes at the same time. Um, Specifically written to support the uh, the audio the, uh, audio case sending case so it only supports a single producer class. 
Yeah, mul multiple producers is a bit more complicated, so <laughs> that's why I didn't bother. Um, okay. Uh, what happens uh, now? Audio sending follows uh, the, these general steps. Audio client connects to audio server. Audio client creates a shared single producer circular queue. Um, shared single producer circular queue. <laughs> Just that I don't have to write it out all the time. Like there's a reason. Uh, you might think it's silly, but there's a reason why I'm always spelling it out because. Like this name is extremely descriptive. It's a shared queue that is single producer and it's a circular queue. So it uses an array and like wraps around at the end. Like this is, this tells you literally all about the behavior of the queue. That's why I'm using the full name. And that's also why the, uh, the class itself is called that. Uh, okay. So uh, in shared memory. Audio client sends the this is PCQ's uh, file descriptor over IPC with the set buffer IPC call um, to the to the audio server. I'm always using stars here. I don't know where that habit comes from. Maybe maybe from MediaWiki because. Like media wiki by default, uh, you do lists with stars and not dashes. That's maybe just a habit of mine. Okay. The, oh, the sir receives the SSPCQ maps it and, um, um, and map set and map set. Kind okay, signal signals start off playback with playback, I think. At the same time. Uh, what is that tab? That's an actual tab. Okay, let's use spaces instead. Audio client writes its audio data into the um, shared memory queue. Server reads audio data from the memory queue. Both sides have uh, additional before Q slash after Q buffers uh, depending on the exact location. Users, the queues are on, on both sides. Pausing playback is just an IPC call, and nothing happens to the buffer except that the server stops reading from it until playback is resumed. Muting has nothing to do with whether audio data is read, read or not. 
that's also important. That's like the main difference between pausing and muting. Like muting just tells the audio server, okay, read audio data, but throw it away. And pausing tells the audio server, okay, don't read anymore, but like continue reading from where you left off the last time. Um, this is like really convenient for um, f for things like sound player and um, uh, a play in theory, which doesn't doesn't support pause, but could in theory. Um, it, it's not uh, useful for piano because piano basically won't ever pause. Even if you internally pause, it will just have its in own internal pausing logic and it will just write um, zero samples um, into the queue whenever it is paused. Uh, just because like p piano has a lot more complicated mechanics. For example, if in the future, I want if you if you pause piano and you have like a reverb effect, I want that reverb to still continue uh, continue playing. Um, so like piano has its own internal pause pausing logic, and even if piano is internally paused, it might just might still call the entire processor chain from the DSP. Um, so that's yeah, but yeah, I think this is this is a really good, uh, probably the most complete explanation that I've done of the entire system. Um, so yeah. I might put that somewhere else uh, except just the commit message like and, and the PR message. Um, but for now, that's good. Uh, already should already play back in a bunch of places. Um, plus increase performance. Uh, prove audio, uh, audio playback performance in a bunch of places. Yeah, okay. Uh, implementation, implementation and commit notes. Now come all like the, the various things that we need to do. Uh, audio loaders don't create legacy buffers anymore. Legacy buffer is kept for a loader. See previous comment message. Um, most audio data passing uh, most intra process audio data passing is done with fixed array sample or array uh, vector sample. God, it's on. <laughs> this is an almost two hour video of me just committing stuff. That's horrific. Uh, if anybody's still watching, Congre congratulations, we're almost done. Fixed array sample or vector sample. Um, actually, bugs to come uh, to uh, run in audio and use at the same time will pin the CPU at 100% due to both of them uh, yield in uh, all the time. See, oh, now let's look into, here we go, that's the commit. Um, that um, yes, kettle, um, sir hangs after change sample rate. Probably already an issue with 
saw these changes. In driver, changing sample rate. Okay, um, no issues, exposed bugs. Um, Okay, what else? Just trying to think of, of any, anything. Oh, right, the, the bus visualization thing. Draw anything until you uh, switch to another. Another station and back again. Sound player. Sound player's boss visualization. Okay. Very simple, vector is simple. Um, yeah, okay. To most, uh, to most audio and in applications. Um, sorry, I can try to extract. Some of the A plane improvements. Okay, yeah, I, I won't try before someone asks because it will be rather hard, but yeah. From the most audio and queuing applications, um, what else? Um, new APIs on uh, the audio client connection, which allows non real time applications to enqueue audio in big chunks like. Before, what else do we have? Audio loaders, blah blah blah. Um, um, remove all of status APIs from the audio server connection. Uh, for information that can be directly obtained from uh, from the shared queue. That's like the playback progress and so on. You can just look at the shared queue and figure that out directly. Um, what do we have here? What other stuff do we have here? Uh, really anything I believe yeah mixer cpp actually just as this change maybe I'll have to extract that but let's not worry about that sort of stuff right now yeah post falls right we have to do that later yeah um, just trying to think of Yeah, I've, I've never actually tested piano with the new changes. <laughs> but I think nobody cares at this point. Um, I 
Yeah, this is doing a synchronous in queue, right? Yeah. Yeah, um... Also, this is this is the wrong way around. I'm just noticing should be should play audio, then start playback, and the other one pause playback. Um, This is a um, it's about to break this up without X. So please from the uh these are some changes to the audio system and uh, that, that uh, uh, for this rectangle commit. Okay, now let's observe the 70 line limit, uh, 70 column limit. Um, ah, that's annoying, like, come on. I, I know I know why this line limit exists. That's because Linus Torvalds uh, likes to have his lines at, uh, his stuff at 70 lines uh, or 72 lines. But like making it the standard for an application that uh, that m probably millions, maybe millions of people around the world use is just ridiculous. Like that should be configurable at a per repo level at least. Or I mean, I mean better yet, um, it should be configurable per user and you just shouldn't have um, any sort of um, any sort of limit to uh, the amount of uh, lines that you have, like just like I had it before, just one continuous line, and then Git could just like break the lines however you want them, have that like a, as a configuration option or something. Like that's not hard. Like there's a bunch of uh, applications that do this all the time. Um, like. Uh, break stuff and I mean what git can also do in the git log is just like put the lines back together that's that is already possible with git like it's it's not that it's a technical limitation it's just uh, Linus Torvalds being Linus Torvalds um, having strong opinions about things and uh, yeah okay either k and I uh, I uh, Either way, I think I'm done. This is 74 line commit. <laughs> like, what the hell? Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I've basically written the novel at this point, so let's commit. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, now let's try fixing audio player loop. Um, I'll not, I'll not actually test, uh, uh, test it because I can't be freaking bother it. It's just no, just no, uh, yeah, I don't know. 
not not uh, not update the copyright. I don't care. Okay. Yeah, there's there's the big hack somewhere in here. Okay, now let's let's do like the final change, which is just the uh, where is it? My sync local file. I wrote it down. Uh, have the auto mute in the audio server, which is mix mix at h, I believe. Yeah, right. Uh, well, that that thing is actually a fix. Like, if if I don't have this, a bunch of applications just crash or don't work. Um, it's basically the reason is that yeah, we we always have uh, like a. Uh, what's it called, a queue of audio all the time. Um, it's not that like we can tell if we have audio from like the number of buffers that were sent to us. So we need to be paused by default. Okay, yeah, but that's that's a simple enough fix. I think that's reasonable also because the client connection, uh, where's the async end queue? Uh, here we go, yeah. So. Whenever we we do an async end queue, we ensure that playback is started. So, like people that don't use the real time end queue uh, system down here, they just can rely on the fact that whenever we we end queue something, we definitely resume the playback. So yeah, we could we could change that. Maybe that that messes up sound player but i have not experienced it messing up sound player so we can just leave that i mean that's the thing this is like a first commit for this new audio system and if we get bugs later we just fix them and that's how we always do it and so i'm not worried about that thing okay um this is all yeah it's commit audio server auto po pause new clients this fixes a bunch of audio clients that don't actually play audio. A bunch of is kind of an exaggeration. It fixes AS Cuddle and <laughs> the audio applet, um, like, like the volume control applet. In either case, this is many commits. need to force oh yeah i need to force push there yeah okay um let's look at my okay let's <laughs> i think it improved a bit yeah anyways this is a plus 900 minus uh 500 uh commit okay Let's grab that, edit this message, boom. Let's see if they, okay, no. Uh, well, now for, for GitHub, I need to, um, actually there, there's typos here. Interesting, yeah, I mean, somebody complains then I'll fix it but honestly I just want this to be ready for review now so that uh, I can get reviews and because this will take some time for, um, for reviews to be finished like that's that should be obvious Uh, 
have to extend this section with like information about the other commits. Um, support fixed array in this joint chunks. I'll put that in bold. <coughs> Um, split buffer dot h split buffer dot h um, buffer let's see buffer uh, what other commits did I have let's check um Uh, yeah, uh, just introduce um, split buffer dot h split up, and then we also have uh, load trans. Plotting, setting a pro producer circular queue of IPC. Um, um, make new order plans auto post uh, post by default. Now this can play. This can just be a hash. Much of plus a lot of. already died in the commit lantern. Um, commit message lines are too long. Um, maximum allowed is 72. Okay. Already fucked up somewhere. Anyways, let's first of all update the commit message. Let's rebase head Five. I don't need that much. I can just reword that commit. Oh, uh, damn it. Okay. Uh, wait, where's the... Uh, there was a typo somewhere. Now, now I can just fix that typo as well. applications and now I need to probably change oh fuck my life I need to change all of those um, manual line breaking it's just garbage oh my god It's always just one character too many. Okay, here we go. Let's put that one up. And let's mark this thing ready for review. Cool.
and let's go on Discord, or I will briefly uh, in a moment go on Discord and send that thing in. Okay. Uh, the time is two hours and 16 minutes, and that's how much time it took me to uh, make this thing ready for review. I hope you learned something about um, commit cleanliness and serenity today. I hope you learned something about Git today, although I'm quite a terrible Git user. And I also hope that you learned something about the new audio system today. I mean, I don't have to do that video anymore. It can just be this video. Anyways, uh, thank you very much for watching and until next time, goodbye.